Sheriff. It's just me, Tom. Whiskey. It's a body of the casting for the 1972 TV series, The Streets of San Francisco, was a careful process. Carl Malden was already a well-known actor and was chosen for his strong acting skills to play Detective Mike Stone. For the role of his partner, Inspector Steve Keller, the producers wanted a younger actor. They found Michael Douglas, who had the right energy, and looked for the part. The two actors did screen tests together to make sure they worked well as a team. Their ability to seem like real detectives on screen was key to their selection. The producers also looked for actors who could bring life to the city of San Francisco through their performances. Each actor went through auditions and had to show they could handle the demands of the roles. The final cast was picked not just for their individual talents, but for how they interacted with each other and sharing a dynamic and believable portrayal of detectives in the city. Henry, that lady died. So tell the judge you're sorry. Come on, man. The 1972 TV series, The Streets of San Francisco, was directed with a clear vision to reflect the city's unique atmosphere and fast-paced life. The director aimed to create a realistic portrayal of crime solving in the city, focusing on the partnership between two detectives, one veteran and one younger. They used the city's diverse settings as a backdrop, capturing the essence of San Francisco's urban environment. The director worked closely with the actors to develop strong characters that viewers could relate to and follow throughout the series. This approach helped to create a sense of authenticity and connection with the audience. The collaboration with the cast and crew was key to bringing this vision to life, with everyone contributing to the show's success through their dedication and shared goal of making a compelling crime drama. The director's style was grounded in realism, with an emphasis on character development and narrative driven by the detectives' interactions and the challenges they faced on the streets. This style resonated with viewers and helped to establish the show as a memorable part of television history. Welcome to a journey back to the streets of the 1970s San Francisco, where detectives Mike Stone and Steve Keller tackle crime in the city by the bay. The show, The Streets of San Francisco, brings together the wisdom of a seasoned detective with the fresh perspective of a younger partner. As they solve cases, the city's hills and famous landmarks become a backdrop to their adventures. This series is not just about the chase. It's filled with moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. So, stay tuned as we uncover some surprising facts about the show. Now, I don't have personal experiences, but many viewers have shared how this show has touched their lives, from inspiring careers in law enforcement to simply providing a thrilling escape each week. And who could forget the legendary actors? Carl Malden, who played Mike Stone, stands out with his memorable performance, bringing both grit and heart to the screen. What about you? Do you have a favorite moment or a story about how the streets of San Francisco left a mark on your life? We're eager to hear your stories and memories, so please share them in the comments below. Your experiences are a valuable part of the show's ongoing legacy. All right. It was a quarter to three, a.m. that is, uh, when I saw this woman. The production of the 1972 TV series, The Streets of San Francisco, was a major undertaking. The show was filmed on location in San Francisco, which presented unique challenges. The city's hilly terrain and busy streets made it difficult to move equipment and set up scenes. Despite these obstacles, the crew was able to capture the city's beauty and create realistic sets that matched the city's look and feel. One of the innovative techniques used during production was the use of lightweight cameras that allowed for quick setup and mobility. This was crucial for shooting in a city where blocking off streets for long periods was not possible. The production team also employed a method of fast editing, which was not common at the time, to keep the pace of the show quick and engaging. The logistics of filming required careful planning and coordination with the city to minimize disruption to the public. The production team worked closely with local authorities to schedule filming during less busy times and to ensure public safety. Overall, the production of the streets of San Francisco was a testament to the skill and creativity of the crew who overcame the challenges of filming in a bustling city to create a memorable and visually stunning show. The television series The Streets of San Francisco was a staple in our household, 
captivating us with its blend of drama, suspense, and compelling characters. The show's strength lay in the dynamic partnership between the experienced detective portrayed by Carl Malden and the youthful energy of Michael Douglas's character. Their on-screen chemistry not only drove the narrative, but also highlighted the generational gap in policing methods. It's a show that deserves to be revisited for its quality storytelling and for being a significant stepping stone in Michael Douglas's acting career. Fans of classic police dramas would appreciate the series for its clear language and engaging plot lines, making it a worthy addition to any DVD collection. The series holds a special place in the hearts of viewers who followed it during its original run and continues to garner interest from new audiences. Bringing this series back for easy viewing would not only honor its legacy, but also introduce it to those who haven't had the pleasure of watching it yet. Like they say, it gets in the blood. Sure it does, just like the virus. Anything new? The music for the streets of San Francisco was created to match the show's action and feeling. The main theme, composed by Patrick Williams, is memorable for its energetic brass and driving rhythm, reflecting the fast pace of city life. The score used during the episodes helped to build tension and guide viewers through the story. It was a team effort, with composers and musicians working closely to make sure the music fit each scene just right. They aimed to enhance the drama and excitement of the detective's chase through the city, making the viewing experience more engaging. The soundtrack became a key part of the show's success, setting the mood and supporting the storytelling. I did a lot of sweet talking to you, but truthfully... In the world of television, connections between actors and their roles often extend beyond the screen. Dick Van Patten, known for his warm on-screen presence, served as the godfather to Susan Richardson's daughter, Sarah, showcasing the close bonds formed in the acting community. Meanwhile, Carl Malden's keen eye for talent led him to a young Dick York, fresh from the men's room, whom he believed perfect for the role in tea and sympathy. This intuition proved successful, marking a significant moment in both actors' careers. Malden's own journey in theater began with Golden Boy at the group theater, where he first honed the skills that would later define his story career in television and film. family of yours meant everything to you. Now, if I don't get you to a doctor, you're never going to see him again. The Streets of San Francisco is a classic TV series that has many memorable scenes. The show was known for its realistic portrayal of police work and the city itself. The directors used the city's hills and famous landmarks to add excitement to car chases and foot pursuits. Actors like Carl Malden and Michael Douglas delivered strong performances that made their characters relatable and their partnership believable. The cinematography often used natural light and real location, which helped viewers feel like they were part of the action. These choices made the show stand out and left a lasting impression on its audience. Comments from the actors and filmmakers often mention the teamwork and the joy of filming in such a dynamic city. They aimed to create a show that was both entertaining and true to life, and many believe they succeeded. The streets of San Francisco still holds a special place in the hearts of those who watched it during its original run and continues to attract new fans today. I give a light. They think they're playing God. Tell me, did you get in touch with the Coast Guard yet? In the world of television and film, actors often face decisions that can alter their careers significantly. Michael Douglas, known for his diverse roles, once declined the part of Judge Wakefield in the movie Traffic. It was only after the writers revised the script that he agreed to take on the role. Meanwhile, Dick Van Patten, another familiar face on TV, formed a close bond with Dick Van Dyke during their time on the new Dick Van Dyke show. Their friendship lasted until Van Patten's passing in 2015. Richard Hatch, who starred in the original Battlestar Galactica, showed his dedication to the series by creating a fan film titled Battlestar Galactica The Second Coming. Despite a tight budget, he managed to bring together the original cast for this project. The film showcased a variety of computer-generated effects, thanks to the help of volunteers from across the internet, demonstrating the power of community and passion in bringing visions to life. About that ring, I'm afraid of losing that. The television series The Streets of San Francisco had a significant effect on both culture and society. 
It showed a diverse picture of the city, touching on themes of partnership across generations and the importance of law and order. The show was one of the first to feature a partnership between an older, experienced police officer and a younger, less experienced one, which became a popular theme in later shows. It also highlighted various social issues of the time, such as drug use, crime, and the challenges faced by those living in the city, which helped start conversations among viewers. The series was well received for its realistic portrayal of police work and the city of San Francisco, which helped people feel connected to the characters and the stories. It also set a standard for future crime dramas, influencing how they were made and what topics they covered. I told you, come on, it was on the streets, everybody knew, I mean six guys. Behind the scenes, the bond between Michael Douglas and Carl Malden was much like that of a father and son, a relationship that extended far beyond the cameras. Despite Malden not having sons of his own, Douglas often spoke of him as a guiding figure in his life. In 2007, Dick Van Patten shared his love for television history with the world through his book, Totally Terrific TV Trivia, offering fans a treasure trove of fascinating facts. A notable detail from the show was the use of a single lamp revolving magnetic red light on the inspector's car, a departure from the actual unmarked San Francisco Police Department vehicles, which were equipped with a steady burning red spotlight. This difference added a touch of drama to the show's portrayal of police work. The television series The Streets of San Francisco was well received when it aired in 1972. It was praised for its engaging stories and the strong performances of its lead actors, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas. The show was a hit with audiences who enjoyed the crime-solving aspect and the dynamic between the veteran detective and his younger partner. It received several Emmy Award nominations and won the Edgar Allan Poe Award for Best Television Episode. These honors were significant for the cast and crew, recognizing their hard work and the show's quality. Winning awards can boost careers, open doors to new opportunities, and is a sign of professional respect in the entertainment industry. And they spotted me. Did you write it down? <coughs> in the early days of television, actors often transitioned from stage to screen to find new opportunities. Dick Van Patten, for instance, began his career on Broadway before moving to television. His role as a young man challenging traditional views in Oh Mistress Mind marked his entry into the acting world. Similarly, Carl Malden's journey to the screen was not straightforward. After years of hard work in steel mills, he decided to pursue his passion for acting, studying at the Goodman Theater. His determination to change his life's path led him to become a respected actor. Meanwhile, in the world of law enforcement, titles can be misleading. In San Francisco, an inspector is not a high-ranking official, but rather a detective, a title that carries different weight in other cities. These stories of change and the nuances of titles reflect the diverse paths and roles found in the rich tapestry of television history. During the filming of The Streets of San Francisco, the cast and crew faced unique challenges and shared memorable moments. Carl Malden, who played Detective Mike Stone, was known for his dedication to the role, often working long hours to perfect his performance. Michael Douglas, portraying Inspector Steve Keller, brought a fresh energy to the set, and his dynamic with Malden was a key factor in the show's success. The two actors formed a close bond, with Malden becoming a mentor to Douglas. Filming on location in San Francisco provided a lively backdrop, but it also meant navigating the city's busy streets and changing weather. The production team worked closely with the local community to shoot scenes, which sometimes led to impromptu interactions with residents. These behind the scenes efforts contributed to the authentic feel of the series, making it a beloved show for many viewers. Drop our overtones. It's the uniform. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. No, man. You've agreed. In the world of television, relationships and careers can intertwine in memorable ways. Pat Poole, known for her work as an actress and dancer, found love on the set of a 1949 show, 
leading to a marriage with Dick Van Patten that lasted over six decades. Their bond remained strong until his passing. Meanwhile, Carl Malden, a respected actor, honed his craft at the Stella Adler Studio of Acting, a place renowned for shaping talented individuals. His legacy continued to be honored by those he worked with, including Michael Douglas, who penned a heartfelt tribute in a major magazine commemorating Malden's life and their shared experiences on screen. These connections highlight the enduring nature of friendships and partnerships formed in the entertainment industry. Your future's in vacuum. Carl. The Streets of San Francisco, a police drama from 1972, set a standard for character-driven storytelling and location-based authenticity in television. It showcased the city's diverse settings and addressed social issues, which influenced future shows to adopt similar approaches. The series also helped launch the career of Michael Douglas, who went on to become a successful actor and producer. Its use of real locations rather than studio backlots inspired other productions to seek authenticity by filming on location. The show's mentor-protege relationship between the lead characters paved the way for similar dynamics in later series. Early exposure to the spotlight marked the childhood of Dick Van Patten, who graced the cover of Victoria Review magazine after winning a photogenic contest. His journey into acting was just beginning. Meanwhile, Carl Malden's acting career came with a personal compromise. He changed his birth name, M. Leiden Sekulovich, to fit into the industry. However, he never forgot his roots, ensuring his family name lived on through his characters, like in the classic film on the waterfront. Barry Sullivan's family life brought its own set of challenges and stories. His son Johnny faced mental challenges and found support at the DeVere School. His daughter Jenny, an actress and playwright, uncovered a deeply personal family narrative through unsent letters from her father to Johnny, inspiring her play J for J the Play, which debuted in 2001, saw John Ritter portraying Johnny, reflecting his own personal connection to the story, having a handicapped brother himself. Jenny took on the role of herself, while Jeff Kober stepped into the shoes of Barry Sullivan, completing the circle of life imitating art. Uh, how am I going to support him if I don't have a business? Your business was in trouble long before your separation. Well, of course my business... In the early 1970s, a crime drama series made its debut, capturing the attention of viewers with its gripping portrayal of law enforcement in a major city. Among its stars was Michael Douglas, who later became a United Nations Messenger of Peace in 1998, advocating for nuclear disarmament and human rights. Another notable actor, Dick Van Patten, took on a different role in 2008 as the co-host of an infomercial for a corporate venture. The show initially aired on Saturdays, directly challenging two established comedies of the time. Its success led to a move to Thursday nights, where it continued to hold its own amidst a wave of popular crime dramas of that decade. They just came through here a couple minutes ago? Yeah, what did he look like? About my age, uh, gray hair. Which way did you say he went? He went up to the roof. In the world of television, certain performances become memorable not just for the acting, but also for the voices that lend them strength. Such was the case with John Carr in South Pacific, where his vocal performance was actually provided by Bill Lee, a member of the Melaman Group. This practice of voice dubbing adds a layer of collaboration to the art of storytelling on screen. Decades before, a film sharing its name with a later television series depicted the life-changing bond between a seasoned police detective and a young person in need of guidance. Meanwhile, Michael Douglas, a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, received recognition for his artistic achievements with an induction into the New Jersey Hall of Fame in 2012, celebrating his extensive career in arts and entertainment. These instances reflect the diverse aspects of the entertainment industry, from behind-the-scenes talents to celebrated actors whose careers span decades and continue to influence future generations. Somebody in her place too? Why? Oh, yeah. yeah, she's a school teacher. In the early 2000s, Dick Van Patten was recognized for his contributions to his community, receiving the honorary title of mayor in Sherman Oaks. His career saw him not only in front of the camera, but also actively involved in the lives of his co-stars. 
He expressed pride in the continued success of Willie Alms, a former colleague, as he ventured into new television roles alongside Scott Bale. Meanwhile, Darlene Carr faced personal tragedy away from the screen when she lost her young son to a rare health condition that affects the blood. Her experience highlights the personal challenges faced by those in the public eye beyond their professional achievements. I knew it. I knew it. I should have thrown him out a long time ago. What's he done? In the world of television, decisions off screen can be as pivotal as those on screen. John Kerr, known for his strong principles, declined a significant film role portraying Charles Lindbergh due to ethical disagreements. Meanwhile, Michael Douglas, after contributing to a major film success, departed from the series with his character opting for academia. The show also felt the loss of Dick Van Patten, a familiar face to many, who passed away in close succession to his colleagues Ann Mira and Betsy Palmer. These events behind the scenes shaped the series just as much as the stories told on the streets of the city by the bay. Would you like to live like that? Can't say I would. In the landscape of Hollywood marriages, Carl Malden's union stands out for its longevity. Married in 1938, he and his wife shared life together until his passing in 29. Their marriage is one of the longest in Hollywood, outlasting even Bob Hope's 69-year marriage. Dick Van Patten, known for his acting, also had a family closely tied to sports and entertainment. His three sons shared a love for basketball and a friendship with the legendary Michael Jackson. Van Patten himself made a significant career choice in 1977. He turned down a role on the love boat to star in Eight is Enough, which became a defining role in his career. This decision opened the door for his friend Bernie Koppel to join the Love Boat cast. My church confessed to his sins. Mrs. Costello, the church has survived. Before his rise to fame, Michael Douglas once used the initials MK for a television appearance. Meanwhile, Carl Malden, who would later become known for his acting skills, served on a film festival jury and was active in high school drama, even leading his class as president. His early stage experience included a role in the classic operetta The Mikado. These experiences laid the groundwork for their future careers in acting. You are. You don't bring him in here. Okay, it's okay. Uh, can we talk along? Dick Van Patten, known for his diverse roles, also made appearances in two episodes of The Weird Al Show, titled Because I Said So, and Al Gets Robbed. His connections in the entertainment industry included being the former uncle-in-law of actor George Clooney. Meanwhile, Darlene Carr lent her voice as a child to enhance the choir in the classic film The Sound of Music. These individuals brought their unique talents to the screen, contributing to the rich tapestry of television history. In the pursuit of realism for their roles as detectives, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas spent time with real detectives from the San Francisco Police Department. Their dedication was well received, earning them the respect and friendship of the officers, who found them to be genuine and likable individuals. Malden's commitment to the series was evident as he was present in every single episode throughout its five-year run, showcasing his reliability and dedication to his craft. Before his acting career took off, Malden excelled academically, finishing high school with top marks. He aspired to continue his education on an athletic scholarship in Arkansas, but faced a setback when the college declined his application due to his decision not to play football. This led him back to his roots in Gary, Indiana, where he would eventually find his path in acting. Peeling paint, torn curtains, cracked lampshade, terrific. <laughs> In the world of television, actors come and go, leaving behind a legacy of entertainment. Norman Alden, known for his work on screen, concluded his acting career in 26, having reached the age of 82. His journey in the industry spanned decades, allowing audiences to witness his growth and transformation as an actor. Meanwhile, Dick Van Patten, another familiar face to viewers, shared a personal connection with Orson Bean, a bond formed in their early years. Their friendship stood the test of time, paralleling their careers in the entertainment field. 
Carl Malden's story begins in Gary, Indiana, where he grew up as the oldest of three children in a family of Serbian immigrants. His father, a milkman by trade, and his mother, Minnie, provided a home steeped in their cultural heritage, shaping Malden's early life and, eventually, his path to becoming a celebrated actor. He said, what time was that? Six, maybe. We're getting ready to eat supper. Do you know where your brother is? In the early 1970s, a popular show captured the attention of viewers with its thrilling police cases and the dynamic duo leading the charge. Behind the scenes, Michael Douglas made a significant career decision by declining a major movie role, which would have given him a share of the profits. Instead, he continued his journey on the small screen, which proved to be a defining moment in his acting career. The show had a strong partnership with Ford Motor Company, evident in the prominent display of their latest car models. The lead characters were seen navigating the city in a brown Ford Galaxy, a vehicle that became synonymous with the series. This partnership extended to the entire fleet of police cruisers, showcasing Ford's dominance in the automotive industry at the time. Adding to the show's charm was the appearance of Dick Van Patten, a familiar face to many. His connection to the entertainment industry ran deep, sharing the screen with his sister Joyce Van Patten in their early years and again in later projects. Their sibling bond and collective talent added a layer of warmth to the series that resonated with audiences. Each episode brought viewers closer to the characters, both on and off the streets, making it a memorable part of television history. His letters to her have been returned, Mark, none of this address. You keep checking. You think they're gonna stick together? Not if there's... In the world of television and beyond, individuals from the show have made significant strides. Michael Douglas, known for his acting and producing, was honored with Israel's Genesis Prize for his efforts in promoting Jewish values and culture. He pledged the prize money to support diversity and inclusion within Jewish communities globally. His commitment to social issues is also personal, as seen when his son celebrated a milestone in Israel. Darlene Carr shares her birthday with Dwayne Chase, linking her to the classic film The Sound of Music through her sister Charmian Carr's role in the movie. This connection highlights the small world of Hollywood and the shared dates that tie actors together across different projects. Carl Malden's journey to the stage was not easy. Despite years of hard work in the steel mills, he could not afford his education at the Goodman Theater. His determination led to a bold agreement with the program's director, which paid off when his impressive first semester performance earned him a full scholarship. This story of perseverance shows that dedication and talent can overcome financial obstacles. Book, if I'll consider dropping all charges against his friend's grandson. You're kidding! In the early days of television, a young actor named Michael Douglas began his journey on a popular show, thanks to a connection that started decades earlier. His co-star, Carl Malden, had been friends with Michael's father, Kirk Douglas, since they were both young actors in New York. This friendship opened doors for Michael, who learned valuable lessons from Malden's vast experience. Years later, Michael Douglas left his mark in Hollywood, earning recognition with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Another notable actor, Barry Sullivan, shared a curious link with a famous movie franchise, as his birthday coincided with a significant date from the Terminator series. Sullivan also appeared in a television show that shared its name with the franchise's pivotal event. These actors' careers intertwined with landmark moments in entertainment, creating memorable television and cinematic experiences. The other half along with guns. I tell you, if we don't find Wilton soon, there won't be enough people around to pay the taxes. Sure, Mike. In the mid-20th century, actor Carl Malden took on a challenging role in the film Baby Doll, portraying a husband in a troubled marriage. The movie, penned by Tennessee Williams, faced criticism for its bold content. When it came to television, the production team of a certain show from the 1970s chose to integrate the city of San Francisco into its storytelling, filming scenes amidst the city streets and using a local warehouse for interior shots. This approach brought a unique authenticity to the show. Malden, who was part of this series, had earlier changed his name from Emladen Sekulovich, following advice from director Elia Kazan. Despite controversy surrounding Kazan in the 1950s, Malden stood by him, supporting his recognition for artistic achievements without letting politics interfere. Question, wait. At 4.30 in the morning, that's what you get for having an unlisted telephone number. 
In the world of television, connections between actors and their roles can span decades. Dick Van Patten, known for his later role in The Family Show 8 is Enough, first encountered Diana Highland on the set of Young Dr. Malone. Their paths crossed again on 8 is Enough, where Highland played his wife. Sadly, her life was cut short, and she appeared in only four of the nine episodes she filmed. Overseas, character names can change due to local preferences or existing shows. For instance, the character Steve from this series was renamed Heller in West Germany to avoid confusion with a similarly named character on their television. Michael Douglas, who starred in the series, went on to achieve significant financial success. By 2009, he and his wife, Catherine Zeta-Jones, had amassed a net worth of $278 million, reflecting his successful career in the entertainment industry. He said, oh, come on, Decker. How do you think Mike Stone is stupid? If he was going to kill Clay, he wouldn't use his own gun. Michael Douglas, known for his powerful role as Gordon Gecko, left a popular show to focus on his film career after producing a successful movie. His departure from the show was explained through his character's career shift to teaching, mirroring a plotline from a well-known film about a San Francisco Police Department inspector. Meanwhile, Carl Malden, another lead actor, had a distinguished film career with two nominations for the highest acting honor, sharing the screen with the legendary Marlon Brando in both films. Suddenly looking for my grandson. What about his friends? You know who they are? In the landscape of television, actors like Philip Pine stood out for their ability to bring life to a variety of complex characters. Pine's presence on screen often meant audiences would see a compelling professional or a formidable adversary, reflecting his range in roles from the 1950s through the 1970s. Norman Alden, another familiar face, held the unique distinction of being the last surviving member of the cast from the animated classic The Sword in the Stone. Meanwhile, Carl Malden's talent earned him a place among a select group of actors recognized for their portrayals of priests, a testament to his skill in capturing the nuances of such a role. This group includes esteemed names like Spencer Tracy, Bing Crosby, and Barry Fitzgerald, all of whom received Oscars for their performances, showcasing the high caliber of acting that defined this era of film and television. All right, give me in the world of acting, connections and achievements often intertwine. Michael Douglas, a star with a notable career, shares a unique bond with his co-stars Jane Fonda and Jack Lemmon through their individual wins of Academy Awards for leading roles. Douglas secured his win for his role in Wall Street, while Fonda and Lemmon were honored for their performances in Clue and Save the Tiger, respectively. Carl Malden, another distinguished actor, was recognized for his contributions to the arts with an induction into the Steel City Hall of Fame. Further linking the past with the present, Douglas has worked alongside actors who have portrayed characters once played by his father, Kirk Douglas. This includes Val Comer and Dennis Quaid, who both stepped into the shoes of Doc Holliday, a role Kirk Douglas famously embodied. Additionally, the connection extends to the character of Ulysses, with Michael Douglas and Sean Bean sharing this mythological role across different movies. These shared experiences highlight the ongoing legacy and connections within the acting community. Before his acting career took off, Carl Malden dedicated time to serve his country as a non-commissioned officer in the United States Air Force. His commitment to his roles was as strong as his service, evident from his repeated collaborations with Richard Widmark in notable films like Kiss of Death and How the West Was Won. Meanwhile, Dick Van Patten, known for his family-oriented roles, faced a setback when he missed out on the lead role in Eight is Enough. However, his fortunes turned when Fred Silverman recognized his talent and cast him as a character inspired by Tom Braden, a journalist with a deep focus on family values. These actors brought depth and authenticity to their performances, shaping their careers and the shows they starred in. Frank, that company you're working for, do you know the reason that you got that job? You got in the face of serious health challenges, Michael Douglas showed remarkable strength. Diagnosed with a throat tumor in 2010, he underwent extensive treatment and, against all odds, was expected to recover fully. His resilience is a testament to his character. 
Carl Malden's life off screen was equally noteworthy. A scholarship led him to the Goodman Theater in Chicago, where he not only honed his acting skills, but also met Mona, the love of his life. Their marriage was a long and happy one, lasting over seven decades until Carl's passing in 29. The bond between Carl Malden and Michael Douglas extended beyond their professional collaboration. Their friendship, forged amidst the backdrop of their shared work, endured well beyond their time on set together. What'd you get from Ballista? Michael Douglas, with a rich heritage from Belarus and Bermuda, brought depth to his role until his departure in 1976, when his character made an unexpected exit to pursue teaching, contrary to his expectations of a dramatic on-screen death. Meanwhile, Norman Alden, known for his role as Lou the Mechanic, became a familiar face to many, often approached by viewers seeking car advice due to his convincing portrayal in commercials. Their contributions to the show added layers of realism and relatability that resonated with viewers. Yes, Mr. Kayo, you saw the shooting? I heard it. Where were you? In the neighborhood of Encino, Dick Van Patten, known for his love of animals, lived close to singer and actress Julie London. His passion for pets was evident from a young age, dreaming of owning a pet shop. His connection to television was not limited to his own shows. He appeared as a guest in two episodes of the series Emergency, which aired the same year as the show set in San Francisco. Before this particular show aired, viewers were introduced to its world through a pilot movie. The movie laid the groundwork for the series, thanks to Edward Hume's adaptation of characters from Weston's novel. This approach of starting with a movie became a stepping stone for the series that followed. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, reportedly never tuned in to watch a certain detective show because the lead character shared a name with a man connected to his personal life. This character, portrayed by Carl Malden, was a seasoned detective navigating the crime-filled streets of a famous Californian city. Malden, beyond his acting career, was related by marriage to Lawrence Starkman. Another key actor on the show, Michael Douglas, much later in his career, received recognition for his artistic achievements with a nomination to the New Jersey Hall of Fame in 2011. These facts highlight the personal and professional intersections of the cast members with notable figures and institutions. Casting decisions can have interesting backstories. For instance, Carl Malden only agreed to be part of the show after producer Quinn Martin chose Michael Douglas for the role of Inspector Steve Keller, which happened through a connection with Michael's father, Kirk Douglas. Norman Alden, another actor from the show, left behind a large family including a son, a daughter, two stepsons, a stepdaughter, and a step-granddaughter after a long partnership with Linda Theban. John Kerr, known for his award-winning Broadway performance in Tea and Sympathy, also featured in the series. He won the Tony Award for Best Supporting Actor in 1954, and later played the same role in the movie adaptation. Long-standing friendships and family ties are often found behind the scenes of television shows. This was the case with Carl Malden and Kirk Douglas, whose friendship dated back to the 1930s. Their bond was reflected in the casting of Michael Douglas, Kirk's son, in a key role. Across the ocean, viewers in the United Kingdom were introduced to the show on the 19th of November, 1973. Another notable name associated with the series is Dick Van Patten, a father to three sons who followed in his acting footsteps, and a father-in-law to women who made their own marks in the entertainment industry. At the tender age of seven, Dick Van Patten showed early promise in acting when he successfully auditioned for a role at the Schubert Theater, despite not being able to read at the time. His natural talent allowed him to outperform two other young actors for the part. Carl Malden, known for his acting prowess, once stood in for Franklin J. Schaffner to accept an Academy Award for Best Director. 
Meanwhile, Michael Douglas, a notable actor in his own right, celebrated a personal milestone by getting engaged to Catherine Zeta-Jones on the last day of 1999. I won't do it. You want me to draw for you? Do it, bye-bye. In the early 1970s, a crime drama series struggled to find its footing among viewers. Initially airing on Saturdays, it didn't attract much attention, ranking low among other shows. However, a shift to Thursday nights saw a significant rise in its popularity, with ratings climbing, and the show securing a spot among the top 30 for several seasons. Despite this success, a later scheduling change led to a rating split with another detective show, resulting in a drop in viewership. This, along with increasing production costs and contract renewals, eventually led to the show's cancellation. Behind the scenes, the series connected to the lives of notable individuals. Barry Sullivan, a cast member, had a daughter, Patsy, who achieved early fame as a model and later had a large family with musician Jimmy Webb. Their children continued the artistic legacy, forming a band that gained recognition. Another actor, Dick Van Patten, brought his experience from attending a school dedicated to professional children in New York, adding depth to the ensemble. Despite its challenges, the series left a mark on television history, illustrating the unpredictable nature of show business and the enduring ties between personal and professional lives. Oh, come on, Lieutenant, be honest. You found me irresistible, right? Well, <laughs> I would hate to... At the young age of 20, Dick Van Patten made history by being the first to film a pilot for a television show, setting a precedent for future actors. His work on set was so impeccable that the only time he faced criticism was for having a too perfect house appearance, which stood out from his usual setting. Beyond his on-screen roles, Van Patten was a guiding figure and friend to many of his co-stars, including Laurie Walters and Susan Richardson, sharing his experience and shaping their careers in the industry. His influence extended to Diane Kay, Grant Goodev, and others, fostering a sense of camaraderie and support among the cast. Before his rise to fame, Michael Douglas earned the title of Mobile Man of the Month during his time working at a gas station at the young age of 20. Years later, he would share more than just a successful acting career with his spouse, Catherine Zeta-Jones. They both celebrate their birthdays on September 25th, despite a 25-year age difference. In an unexpected turn, Norman Alden stepped in to provide uncredited voice work for Peter Chris in the film Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, showcasing the unforeseen roles actors can sometimes play. Throughout his career, Dick Van Patten made significant appearances on television, guest starring in over 100 episodes across various shows, mirroring the extensive television presence of Marion Ross. Carl Malden shared a bond with Brad Dexter, famed for his role in The Magnificent Seven, connected by their Serbian heritage. In a notable moment, Michael Douglas, Malden's former co-star, honored him with the Monte Cristo Award for his outstanding career, a recognition also bestowed upon distinguished figures like Jason Robards and Brian Denny. I think that whoever did it knew them, and that the two of them knew you. In the world of television, connections and past roles often intersect in interesting ways. Barry Sullivan, known to many as the ex-father-in-law of musician Jim Messina, brought his own unique presence to the screen. Norman Alden, another actor with a memorable role, portrayed a 40-year-old man facing a difficult future in the film Andy, which highlighted the challenges faced by individuals with mental disabilities. Meanwhile, Michael Douglas, a key figure in the industry, was honored with the prestigious Monte Cristo Award by the Eugene O'Neill Theatre Center, recognizing his significant achievements in the field of acting. These individuals, each with their own stories, contribute to the rich tapestry of television history. Mountain battery, bookmaking, loan sharking, deep scar left cheek. Bookmaking, loan shark, and strong arm man. In the world of television, connections to family, and history often run deep. 
John Kerr, known for his acting, was born into a family with a strong theatrical presence. His father, Jeffrey Kerr, and mother, June Walker, were both actors and his grandfather. Frederick Kerr was also in the industry. In a similar vein, Carl Malden brought a personal touch to his role as a police officer in a well-known series set in San Francisco. His character shared his real-life last name, Sekulovich, which viewers might remember as the name of the sergeant who escorted criminals to their cells. Barry Sullivan, another actor from the same era, faced unique challenges on set due to his height. While filming The Great Gatsby in 1949, he had to adjust his position in scenes with Alan Ladd, who was significantly shorter, to maintain the visual balance on screen. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world of classic television and film, where actors' personal histories and physical attributes directly influence their performances and the production process. Superior officer has been proved. It is the ruling of this commission that you will be reduced in the world of television and beyond, the cast of a popular show often leads interesting lives. Dick Van Patten, known for his acting, also founded Natural Balance, a brand dedicated to dog and cat nutrition. Michael Douglas, another prominent actor, shared a home with Brenda Vaccaro, a fellow actress, for a time in the 1970s. Their relationship began after working together on a film project. Carl Malden, a respected actor, made a personal journey to Yugoslavia, his father's birthplace, and contributed to the creation of a film titled Twilight Time, which was released in the early 1980s. These endeavors show the diverse paths their careers and personal interests took them on. Oh God, they got a cut off my arm, but one of them had cutters. Seven the chain, only... In the world of television and film, connections between on-screen talent and real-life inspiration often emerge in unexpected ways. For instance, the Brazilian soccer player known as Macon carries a name influenced by Hollywood. His father, an admirer of actor Kirk Douglas, intended to name his son after Kirk's son, Michael. However, due to a spelling error by a clerk, the name was recorded as Macon, leading to his full name Macon Douglas Isnando. Carl Malden, another prominent figure in the industry, has the distinction of participating in multiple films recognized by the National Film Registry for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic importance. These films include classics such as The Streetcar Named Desire, On the Waterfront, One-Eyed Jacks, How the West Was Won, and patent attention to detail is crucial in production design to create a believable setting. This was evident in the police cars used in the show, which closely resembled the actual San Francisco Police Department vehicles of the time. The only notable difference was the arrangement of the emergency lights. The studio versions featured a combination of revolving and steady burning red lights, while the real SFPD cars were equipped with a steady burning red light and a flashing amber light alongside the central revolving red light. This small discrepancy aside, the authenticity of the props played a significant role in bringing the show's setting to life. Most rapists are schizoid. Well, that's that push-pull thing, huh? Behavior, personality, goals, all complete. The Streets of San Francisco was a show that many remember fondly. It brought the city to life on the screen and gave viewers a sense of the drama and excitement of being a detective in such a busy, beautiful place. If you watch this series, think back to those days. How did it make you feel? Did it change the way you saw the world or the city of San Francisco? Maybe it inspired you to visit or even move there. Share your stories and let others know how this show touched your life. Your experiences can spark joy and nostalgia in others. So please like, share, and subscribe for more discussions about the shows that have shaped our love for television and film. Your input is valuable and helps keep the memory of these classic shows alive for future generations.